Hello there and welcome to the Year 9 Options Information for Pupils and Parents video in March 2021. My name is Paul Tillman, I'm the Assistant Head Teacher at St Paul's and I'm uh, responsible for the options process. You can see my email address there on the screen, paul.tillman at uk. That's always the, 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 the easiest way to get hold of me. So if you've got any questions arising from this presentation or the options booklet or the options process, um, as a whole, or any subject questions that you're not quite sure uh, where to direct them to, this is for pupils or parents. Please do, please do drop me an email and I will get back to you or arrange a phone call so that we can get your questions answered. So we understand that the, the, the options process um, can be a daunting time for, for pupils and, and their parents as well. Um, there are possible long term implications here. I mean, at, at minimum, this is the subjects that will be studied for the next three years at St Paul's. Um, and parents, you, you might not be as familiar as you might like to be with education as it is in, in 2021. And of course, we know that children do sometimes change their mind. So look, we, we go through this process every year. We know this is your first time through this process. Um, you might have had, had older siblings um, have been through it as well. But of course, things do, do always change and move forward. So. Um, we do understand and we do want you to get in touch and ask questions um, of us. The aims of this video and the accompanying options booklet is to support, provide clarity for you, um, to enable us to work in partnership with, with all pupils and parents and to dispel any myths that are out there surrounding any of the options process or the options subjects. Um, the vision for the curriculum at St Paul's is that it is broad and balanced um, right up until the end of, of year 11 and pupils have had the opportunity to study a, a really wide range of subjects already in year, year seven and eight and although we're going to narrow down the curriculum very very slightly there's still a very broad range of subjects on offer uh, we believe in our broad and balanced curriculum and we believe that it provides the best opportunities for pupils future successes the three years of focus study in years uh, nine ten and eleven um, supports pupils to be able to make excellent progress by the end of year 11. And this success built in years 9 uh, to 11 leads on to success post 16, hopefully at St Paul's, but perhaps elsewhere at university, an apprenticeship or in careers. So our curriculum, whatever um, each pupil's individual curriculum looks like um, in year 9, 10 and 11, uh, we know that it supports um, progression for individual next steps. So here's some key dates for you and, and some information about the process. So just to be very, very clear at, at, at the start here, this is a process where we work in partnership with, with pupils and parents um, and pupils, you are expressing preferences. So we take into account your preferences and we guide you onto the most appropriate curriculum. It does not necessarily mean um, you always get your first choice, is it? Well, but certainly we do take that into account. Um, the, so you've got the, this information video and the accompanying booklet, which are, are, are being released um, now, and, and, and you're watching this now. Um, I'd like you over the next uh, three weeks, running up to Easter and, and beyond if necessary, I'd like you to have conversations with your subject teachers, with uh, relevant heads of department, with parents, with me, with your form tutor, with your year leader, uh, to help you make the most appropriate decisions. So we've got the information provided here plus all of these discussions that you need to have with the experts that will help you to make um, the best possible decisions. The options form will be an online um, Microsoft form, so an electronic form, and we'll release that um, in an email to parents on the 25th of March and then uh, that needs to be submitted by the latest the 16th of April please. There is absolutely no benefit to rushing to submit that form early. Just please make sure you meet that 16th of April deadline. You know, take your time. This is an important decision. Get all of the information um, you need to make the best decision for you. We'll take into account your, your preferences. And, and, and I, can, um, I can say to you now that in the last two years that we've gone through this process, we've been able to award 99% um, of pupils, three of their first four preferences. So almost every single pupil has got three of their first four preferences. Okay, so, so most of the time we are able to put you in your first preference for, for almost all of your subjects. Where we're not able to do that, that tends to be a 
either we haven't got enough capacity in classes or one subject becomes particularly popular. Um, and, and then we have to balance um, uh, everyone's preferences, um, as well as the, 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 the guidance we provided by heads of department and subject teachers. Um, so you'll get a letter, we commence the 7th of June, which will explain which, which subjects you've um, been assigned to. As I say, 99% of people get through of the first four preferences and you'll find out then. There'll be a window outlined in that letter, uh, which gives you a chance to feedback to me if necessary, if, if you've got uh, queries or any subsequent requests, um, just a short window there. And, 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 and if, if necessary and if possible, we can make some adjustments. Um, and then you start year nine in September uh, and you start your new subjects with lots and lots of enthusiasm. So here's the best advice that we can give really. Uh, read the options booklet from, from cover to cover. Read it, um, pupils and parents together. Make sure you understand it. Don't, don't skim it, don't skip subjects. Make sure you read it fully, uh, get the information you need. Talk to subject teachers. Um, if it's a new subject where you don't have one of those teachers, for example, um, health and social care or sociology, please go and talk to the relevant head of the department or talk to me and often directly to the right person. Talk to your tutors and year leaders. Um, talk to your parents, please, pupils, and, and have those discussions at home. Please do not have any preconceptions about subjects. Okay, please go into this with a really open mind um, uh, without any sort of prejudgments about any of the subjects. Please don't make choices um, or express your preference based on the teacher you think you'll get. I can assure you, year on year timetables and stuff, and those change. And please don't make a choice based on a teacher. Equally, please don't make a choice based on what your friends say they're going to, to pick or, or put in order um, on their options form. There's no guarantee that they will actually do what they're telling you they're going to do. And there's also no guarantee that they'll be assigned that, that option. So please don't be in a situation where you're in a subject that you don't really want to study because your friends said they were going to pick it. And then they're not in, not in that class anyway. So please make the decision based on what you um, have talents and interests in. Um, you, you quite possibly have older brothers and sisters that have been through the school. Um, do, do listen to what they have to say, although please bear in mind they will, they will have slightly different experiences than you will have. Um, and then, of course, please submit that options form by the deadline, which is the 16th of April. Um, you're right, you've got access to Unifrog, which is a really fantastic resource uh, to allow you to research careers and subjects as well. Um, so you might want to uh, go through that too. Okay, so I'm going to explain a little bit about some of the subjects now. So we've got the, the red subjects in the options book, or they're the predetermined uh, subject family. So every pupil will study these subjects, maths, science. Now science will be combined science or, or separate science. I'm going to talk about that a bit more in a minute, but everyone will study science. Um, everyone will study English. That results in English language and English literature GCSE at the end of year 11. Everyone is already in their modern foreign languages groups, so there'll be no changes there, and everyone studies RE. This is our, our core um, curriculum that provides a solid and proven foundation for all pupils, whatever their next steps post-16 might be. So with science, some pupils might study combined science. Um, they still study um, biology, chemistry, and physics. So you still study all of, all of the all of the sciences, there's sometimes a misconception out there that they only do two of the three, like they only do biology and chemistry and not physics or, or some variation, that's, that's not true. You still study biology, chemistry and physics. However, combined science results in two combined science GCSEs, and it's called combined science. Um, if you study combined science, you can still access any science related subject or, or career post 16. So you could, for example, study combined science and go on to study three A levels um, in science, if, if that was your preference. The benefit of study, studying combined science in year 9, 10 and 11 is it allows you to study an additional blue subject or option subject. So we'll talk about them um, in a moment. So if you study combined science, you can also study an option subject. If you study separate science, you still study biology, chemistry and physics. However, you go into slightly more depth than in combined science, and therefore this results in three separate GCSEs called biology, chemistry and physics. Um, again, you can progress from separate science on to study uh, all three A-level sciences if, if you so wished, or any science related, um, any other subject related science or career. If you study separate science, this takes up your options slot in your timetable. So if you study separate science, you won't be able to study any of the other options subjects. 
design and technology. So we're pretty unique in Milton Keynes um, and actually we're, we're unusual nationally to be able to offer the breadth that we do in design and technology. So nearly all pupils study d and um, in year nine to 11. There's lots of application across curricula, so maths and science in particular. Um, and the picture you consider is of a 3D printer. d and is, you know, it's a 21st century subject. It's not metal work, woodwork, sewing and cooking. Okay? It's, it's about solving a problem, not creating a product. But as I say, almost all pupils will study design and technology. Pupils do need to be aware of the three d &T subjects, which they studied in year seven and eight, because they can only progress into year nine and beyond with one of those subjects. Can't remember which three you've studied, please have that conversation with your d &T teacher. Expressive arts. So I'll give an example here of, of what the curriculum looks like in year seven, year eight, and then year nine and beyond. So in year seven, all pupils studied all expressive arts subjects. At the end of year seven, uh, you went through a process and, and you were assigned two um, expressive arts subjects to focus on in year eight. You are now able to choose between or express preference, rank order those two subjects, the one that you would prefer to study in year nine um, and beyond. Learning and expressive arts allows pupils to develop their gifts and talents as young people in our Christian community. Creativity is nurtured, encouraged and flourishes. And of course, there are many, many careers in the creative sector of the economy, so they're really valuable um, subjects here in expressive arts. Humanities, so in year seven and eight, all pupils studied geography and history. We now ask students to, to express preference and, and rank those two in order. Um, which one do you have the most interest for? Do you have the most talent in? Which one would you prefer to study in year nine and beyond? They are both fascinating disciplines that allow pupils to develop useful knowledge and thinking skills that are applicable, whichever pathway is taken post 16. Now we've got the new subjects. This, this is the blue subject or the option. Um, subject family. We've got some subjects you'll be familiar with and also some new subjects. We've got business studies, digital information technology, health and social care and sociology. Please do read the options booklet carefully regarding these subjects. Um, if you would like further information about them, the people to talk to are, are Mr. Ted's or the business department regarding business studies, Mr. Abdul Majid um, about information technology or Mr. Jahal about information technology. And then uh, Mr. Knight and Ms. Dennis about health and social care and sociology. So please do talk to, to those relevant members of staff, or of course me, and I can direct you on to the, the, the correct person. Please don't have any preconceptions about these subjects. Go on with an open mind um, and do consider them. In the option subjects, um, or, or the option subject family, there are uh, a range of qualifications. Some of them are vocational, so BTEC or Cambridge Nationals, and some of them are GCSEs. Um, Please ask teachers about them. That the assessment in vocational subjects and GCSE subjects is different. In vocational subjects, they tend to have a higher, higher proportion of assessment through coursework and a lower proportion of assessment through final exams. It's, they, they can be really, really good if you like coursework. There's vocational qualifications in PE, engineering, business, information technology, and um, health and social care. They are all level two qualifications and equivalent to GCSEs. They are not easier or harder than GCSEs, they're just a little bit different. Taking vocational subjects um, will not affect uh, your future pathways post 16. So this is the object, option subject family. So we've got uh, business, a GCSE and business vocational, computer science, we've got information technology, which is a vocational subject, engineering manufacture, which is a vocational subject, um, that goes very well with engineering design, actually. So you can take engineering design in the design and technology subject family, and engineering manufacturing the option, fam option subject to family, if that's something you're particularly interested in. Health and social care is a vocational subject, and then sociology is a uh, is for GCSE. And a reminder here, if you study combined science, you'll be able to take one of these option subjects. If you choose to take separate science, you won't be able to take one of these option um, subjects. So what next? Spend some time talking to your parents, to your tutors, to teachers about the different subjects. Read the option book, but take in all this information. Um, go on Unifrog, make really, really informed decisions. Okay. Ask lots and lots of questions. If you need to ask questions of me, please do. Um, pupils, send me a message in it's learning or, or find me. Um, parents, please do send me an email. 
uh, and then look out for the electronic options form and complete it by the 16th of April. A reminder, there is no advantage to completing that options form sooner. Um, you, you won't be sort of preference in any way to do. Take the time over that, but do meet that deadline of the 16th of April. Here are some frequently asked questions. Which teacher will I have in year nine? Look, we, we can't confirm that staff and timetable and changes year on year. So please make your decisions and express your preferences based on the subjects themselves. Are vocational subjects easier? No, they're not. Um, vocational subjects tend to have more coursework than um, academic or GCSE subjects. And if you like that type of assessment, it might be for you. I don't need to try on that subject, I'm dropping it. Um, this can be a common misconception for, for, for year eight pupils in, in, the, in the Pentecost or summer term, um, but it's not the case. That you, you don't know which subjects you're going to be continue with, continuing with in year nine until later on in, in the term. Um, and of course, it's, it's really, really important to, to keep doing your best in all your subjects. The school motto is, after all, love, serve and do the best that is possible. So you do need to keep working um, your best until the end of year eight, please. Why didn't I get my first choice? So hopefully I've made this clear. This is a process where we work in partnership and you express preference. And then we take those preferences in, into account. And, and of course they hold significant um, sway in the final process. As I said before, 99% um, of pupils are awarded three of their first four preferences. What if I joined a school late in year seven or year eight? I didn't get to choose my DNT or expressive art subjects when everyone else did. Um, of course, this applies to, to some of you out there. You, you weren't with us from the start of year seven and you didn't get the chance to uh, go through those processes. If that applies to you, um, you can choose from any of the expressive art subjects or any of the DNT subjects. So please talk to your expressive art teachers and your DNT teachers and make sure you make a good decision. What are subjects I study during years nine to 11 affect what I can study post 16? Uh, no. What will affect what you can study post-16 is, is your achievement um, meeting the, the entry requirements for different courses post-16. So um, if, if you end up down a route that perhaps, you know, year 10, 11, you think, Do you know what, actually, I, I really wish I'd um, chosen history and, and, and you've been studying geography, you can still access history A-level, for example. We're really confused, please help. And you may be, this is, this is a, as I said at the start, this could be a daunting process. Um, so please just send me an email. I'm the best points of contact. My email address is there for you again. Uh, please, any questions you've got beyond um, what I've addressed in this, in this video, or if you're unsure about anything that has come up in this video, please do get in contact with me. So these were the aims um, to, to support you uh, in, this, in this process, to provide some clarity, and to work in partnership with you, and hopefully dispel any myths. Um, if we've come up a little bit short in any of those areas, please drop me an email, um, ask the questions, and, and we, we really want to support you to make the, the best decisions so you can end up with the best curriculum for you for the next three years. Thank you for taking the time to watch.